need to go. <laughs> I'm looking at my, my clock. It says one more minute. No, thing turns around. Okay, good. So, guten Morgen. Uh, I think most of you are German here, right? Who is not German? Oh, <laughs> that failed. <laughs> I was talking to a, a guy at the party yesterday, and uh, uh, we were talking about how I speak a little bit German. I can understand almost everything, but I speak it a little bit. Uh, for the Germans amongst, of, uh, amongst us, ich habe Deutsch gelernt von der Sendung mit der Maus. Uh, when I was a little kid, you learned to speak German from the Dutch tele. I'm Dutch from the Dutch uh, television. Uh, we had Holland One, Holland Two, and like five German channels. So I learned to speak f fluent German and understand it when I was four years old. Um, looking at the A team in German, uh, ich liebe es wenn ein Plan funktioniert. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yesterday was it was a uh, interesting the, the guy was really um, not speaking English that well so I tried to have a whole conversation in German which worked I talked to him in German the whole evening but uh, he went to a holiday in Holland for years and years so I'm, I'm I'm not really sure if my German was so good or that he just understood half the German I spoke and half my English words <laughs> and some Dutch words and some words that I just made up on the spot and he just puzzled it all together we'll see um, so, like I said, I'm from Holland. The, 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 the slide deck has my uh, intro thing way in the back. So um, I get to talk about myself when we're all done. Fine. Um, a friend of mine says, hey, you want to speak at a conference? I, cool. Uh, what about PowerShell? OK, I shall uh, bedazzle the uh, SQL Server friends I have with my PowerShell knowledge. No, it's at the PowerShell conference. Oh. Um, okay, <laughs> so I've noticed that there are, uh, speaking of friend, that's the, the, the guy over there who made me do this, <laughs> beardy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rob, if you want to tweet him, uh, he is uh, his, uh, SQL DBA with beard and his blog is SQL DBA with a beard. Uh, he had his Twitter handle also SQL DBA with a beard, but Twitter doesn't have that many characters, so they cut one off. So for a while, he was SQL DBA with a bear. <laughs> Looking at him, you believe that also, right? <laughs> um, so I, I noticed there are two people here, um, two types of uh, speakers here. The PowerShell gurus, the guys that go, look what I can do with PowerShell. And I made it into a module for you, so it is really useful for you in your daily life. And I. And then there's people that work with a certain technology because we're, most of us are IT pros or admins, I think, right? Um, and that do something with a specific technology and use PowerShell to do that with. And so maybe you can use that in your daily life as well. I'm one of those. I'm a SQL Server MVP. Um, I work with SQL Server for, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years or something. I've been in IT since 1989. Oh, getting old. Uh, we didn't have internet at the time. Mm. So, um, what I'm going to talk about today, I've, I've, I've called it log parser versus PowerShell because um, it's an it's an old problem, uh, a really old problem, uh, importing files into a database. I, who of you has ever tried using the import export wizard? to import a CSV file into a database. And which one of you succeeded in that? <laughs> Two. First try? <laughs> no? Well, yeah. I, know, I know why that happens. And I'll, I'm going to show you why, what, why that happens, what you can do instead, and how you can speed it up a little bit. Um, let's get past this. I don't have many slides. I'm not really a slides person. Um, and I had to move all my uh, demo code to an Azure VM because my little laptop just, uh, the bear is waking up. <laughs> Did you bring it with you? <laughs> so that, um, I had to uh, tweak and, and see if I can get uh, Chrissy's code a bit faster, uh, but that wouldn't work on my laptop. My laptop just was about ready to burst in flames and uh, fan made a lot of noise and it just wouldn't work anymore. So I moved it to an Azure machine. Um, so 
I'm going to show you log parser a bit, but really just to explain the problem of why we don't, uh, as a SQL people and, and maybe others as well, don't use log parser much or all these sp sp specialistic tools to do something. And we go back to uh, so use something um, like PowerShell. Because even though I'm a SQL guy, um, every time, every time somebody from Microsoft comes in and does a scan of our network and they do these because we have an enterprise agreement and then Microsoft shows up and they say, hey, this is, um, uh, this is the list of stuff that you could do and, and improve in your network. And they all, all say, you should use policy-based management inside your SQL Server to control your SQL Server. Has anyone ever had that? No? Has anyone ever tried policy-based management inside SQL Server? No. Does anyone use SQL Server in this room? I should have asked that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So, my problem with policy-based management, and I've, I've been at DBA for th literally thousands of SQL Servers, sometimes at the same time. Um, it works for specific versions, and it works for SQL Server. But being a DBA is not just about SQL Server. You have to fight with SAN people. Um, you have to... Uh, this is a Star Wars thing. Sand people scare easily, but they'll usually be back in bigger numbers. <laughs> uh, and um, the, you, you need to go away from the SQL Server sometimes and be on the network, f talk, to an, uh, talk to the file system, talk to the Active Directory. There's a lot of moving parts in making sure that a SQL Server works nicely because a SQL Server is never an end product. Nobody buys SQL Server by itself to do something, right? It's always part of a solution. Sometimes it's part of a third-party solution, right? Then you can't touch it and you just need to make sure the hardware is nice. And sometimes you can talk to a developer and make their queries go faster. But it's, it's always, you need to know about many things. So this is why I use PowerShell. Question I get a lot at SQL Server conferences, why do I need PowerShell? I can do that, what you just demoed with SQL. So usually my first demo is something that you cannot do with SQL, so I don't even get that question. I'm sure I don't have to do that here. Um, but th the problem I'm gonna show you is very simple. And also, um, it, I, I think, I thought, maybe you, you, you you decide when you're done and you fill in the review, right? I'll show you how a guy like me tweaks and tunes SQL Server, what we look at when we're, and I'm gonna use PowerShell to do something with SQL Server, but I'm gonna try and make it faster because you've heard this probably before, PowerShell sometimes is not fast enough, right? Um, it's a really good tool for the user, user because I can do a simple command and it will just go out and do things for me. But if you really want speed, may want to rewrite it in C sharp or something. Then again, what kind of speed are you looking for? Um, is the C sharp code, it, is it the speed of your computer because the computers are expensive? Or is it my speed? I can type in a uh, um, command. Uh, is this thing still on? Yeah. I can type in a command and go about my business. So I'm faster. And I think these days I'm more expensive than computers. I'm not sure. Some companies have really expensive computers. But the time of a person is also valuable, and this is why we use PowerShell, right? This is the, there's different variations of speed, I think. Are you getting me what I'm, okay, good. I see heads nodding, okay. <laughs> so, something practical. Um, the log parser thing, we're gonna move past that really quickly, um, because this is a PowerShell conference. Uh, have you guys played with log parser? You like it? Hands go down. <laughs> All of them, you like it? No? Okay, that's clear. Um, and I'm going to take a bit, a bit of code from Chrissy Lemaire. Um, I'm going to ask a lot of questions here because I've never spoken for a PowerShell audience in a PowerShell conference before, but who, knew, who knows Chrissy Lemaire? Okay, okay, that's good. Um, she wrote something. Is that on my next slide? That would be cool if I can time it that way. Oh, that never happens. Um, she wrote um, something called DBA tools together with Rob over there. Um, and a lot of, and 52 other people. <laughs> so, and there's, there's a bunch of use, uh, useful code uh, in there that makes my time speed up. I love that thing. 
Uh, I've put some code in there myself. June 1st, it will be live. Ooh. Um, because I needed that. And oh, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant piece of uh, uh, PowerShell code for any DBA should have that on their machines. If you have more than one SQL server, even maybe even if you have one, get that stuff. Now, Chrissy has also written a um, piece of code. It's not even a module yet, I think. No, it's, not, it's just a piece of code that imports, bulk imports, C a CSV file into SQL Server. Now, first time I saw that, I thought, okay, that's brave. Using PowerShell to bulk import something in, CS in, in SQL Server because there are, this, this is an old problem, right? There are many tools that can do that. There's SSIS. There's the import-export wizard if you can get it to work. There is uh, <laughs> this BCP bulk copy program has been around forever. And these things are fast. And Chrissy made it work, right? It, it was faster. Now, Chrissy's, she'll have it on her blog. Is that on her blog? Oh, there's movement in this thing. Blog parser versus Chrissy script. Um, my talk might be completely out of focus with my slides. It's more about what I want to show you. <laughs> Never mind the slides, right? <laughs> Um, so let's see what's next. Ah, yes. This is one thing I need to uh, talk about first before we dive into some... Uh, I'm if that thing's done, I'm just allowed to turn it over, right? And start again. <laughs> she kicked me out. She already warned me. Uh, <laughs> it's 45 minutes, and then you have 15 minutes for questions. Uh, but if you have questions, don't wait until that thing is done, right? Yeah, so... Here's an important thing. This is, this is not PowerShell, but I need, to, I need to go into that a little bit before we start. Uh, this is something inside SQL Server. This is what, if you have a SQL Server that's, the thing is slow, what do we do? Um, add disks, add RAM, still slow. And then you get a, a SQL Server guy in the door and he looks at the thing, maybe blows some smoke at it, does a dance around the thing or something, and then tweaks a few things and suddenly it's a thousand times faster. That happens sometimes. How does that work? Uh, do we do we know some magic that you guys don't? Um, no, it's just a little bit of internals that you need to know, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about that. So, in SQL Server internals in two minutes. Okay, <laughs> <You're ready? laughs> maybe five minutes. I don't know, but here's a um, graphical explanation of the architecture of SQL Server. Sort of. <laughs> it's a bit more complicated than this, but let's not go there. Um, here we go. If you run a query on a SQL Server, right? You, you, your query goes on the CPU. SQL Server does not let Windows do the scheduling of the threads. SQL Server starts up, creates a bunch of threads in the OS, and manage them, manages them, them himself. This is called the SQL OS, the SQL Server OS. He does that. Now you have a query, you give it to the engine, the SQL Server engine, the query gets time on the CPU. So it's here, query's running. It gets four milliseconds. They, they call this a quantum, it gets, I don't know why, cool name. Um, ah, okay, cool, <laughs> good to know. Um, oh, that is old stuff, yeah, fax, fax VMs, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I shouldn't say that I know these things. I look gray, ha gray hair. <laughs> so um, it gets four milliseconds. If it needs something from disk, if, if the query needs something that is not in memory, it can't do anything. So it, it, it can just, it needs to wait until the uh, thread that does the operate, the, the goes to the sand, grabs the data off the disk, puts it in memory, so this query can get at it it doesn't stay on the CPU. It doesn't wait here because then all your CPUs would be blocked right away, right? If, if you need to go to disk. So what happens is the SQL OS will put that query here in suspended mode and it will get a wait state. It will tell the engine, hey, this query is now no longer on the run running queue. It's in the uh, wait list. Wait list? It's in the wait list and it has a wait status. So, so you have an explanation of why it is not doing something. And as soon as that uh, I.O. thread comes back from disk and grabs something and puts it um, in memory, 
it signals this query that, hey, you can run again. I've got your stuff. So this query goes to the runnable queue. This is basically, it can go on the CPU, but something else is already in the CPU, and there's multiple guys waiting because they all want time on the CPU. So there's a queue. There's a little queue of people waiting for that, their four milliseconds on the CPU. So it goes here. And then when it, it is his turn, it goes there, answers the query, goes away. Now, internals. That's, a, it is, that's all it. There's all this to it. What do we do as specialists? I don't need to do this. Um, we measure this. We look at these wait states. So we know what SQL Server is waiting for. It's really good at telling you this. Uh, there's a few that um, if you are here and you're doing something, you've got all your resources, but you're doing something really complicated, uh, complicated uh, calculation, or you're using T-SQL as a language to do something that you shouldn't do in T-SQL, like splitting strings, a comma-separated string or something, it's really slow at that. That eats up CPU. So all the resources are there, but you go across your quantum. You use up your four milliseconds. You, go, you don't go here because you have all your resources, but you get kicked off and you go straight here. So you need to wait for your turn. And this will have a different wait status. You'll see that. It's called an SOS scheduler yield. If you've ever seen that in your SQL server, when you look at wait statistics, it just means that either your CPUs are not powerful enough, you should give your VM a bit more, or you're just doing something that you shouldn't do in, uh, in SQL, something like that. You need to talk to your developers or to the third party that made the thing, maybe upgraded or something. Maybe they've seen it. Now, last bit about the uh, wait states. These are a, a few that you'll see. I'll, I'll show you a script, but which you, you, you can measure this. Um, they look weird, but basically anything with I.O. in it means you're waiting for I.O. Right? If you see the wait statistics on a server and the I.O. is on the top, talk to your sand guys or do less I.O. Right? You need an index maybe or something. And then there's this one. This always gives me a, an argument with the developers. Async network I.O. means SQL Server can keep up but it's waiting for the application. It's done something, it has a result set, and it's giving it to you, but maybe you are processing the data in a really slow loop, and the developers will say, the network is slow. Uh, because network, right? Um, never the network, I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> it could be that the network is slow. SQL Server doesn't know, you've seen it? Yeah, okay, I've never seen the network that's I've always, always, always the developer. Um, Here's the schedule of yield, and here's a locking thing, right? Um, the locking thing is interesting because if you're updating something and somebody else wants to read from it, you're locking each other. And you can throw, if you see that as 100% or 80% of your wait states, you can throw hardware at the problem until you're blue in the face. It is not going to go faster at all, right? This is important stuff to know if you're tuning a SQL server. So far, so good. Shall we go back to PowerShell? Did I bore you guys or was this okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where are we? What's going on? Okay. Now, um, to fix, to try to fix, I'm going to try and make, make uh, Chrissy's code a bit faster today. See if that works. Uh, Rob has already said, oh, even SSIS is not that fast and it's two minutes something, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can go faster than two minutes something. Um, even SSIS is not that fast, so she would be really happy if you can make that faster. Okay. Um, one of the problems when, you, uh, when you're inserting something into SQL Server in a single batch is that you don't do this. This is something you'll see in a query plan. It's called parallelism. It's where SQL Server decides, I have a query, but I can do this across multiple CPUs. I can use all the power of the machine. This is something we're, we're going to try this um, to do with Chrissy's code as well. And there's, um, shall I first, it's been halfway. You want to see Chrissy's code first? Do a little demo. Let's show the code. Okay, here we go. See if my VM is still up. So I have a VM. This is, um, these, are, these are the wait stats I was talking about. When you're looking for a script that you need uh, the measure, here we go. Type in, go, go to Google, type in Glenberry DMV. You'll get a whole bunch of scripts that are useful for measuring anything and everything in SQL Server, one of which is wait stats. 
and I'll wait till the picture is done. <laughs> no worries, you can have the slide deck right after if you need to or something. Um, so I've, I've got the query for the weight statistics here uh, with which I can measure. And if I've done some testing this morning already, and um, this is, um, uh, as you can see here, I'm, 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 I'm getting some page I.O. latches, which means I'm inserting something in a table and that inserting is the bottleneck. So this is a good thing because Chrissy's code just showed me a whole bunch of this. Async network I.O., which I cannot make faster in SQL Server. It means SQL Server can handle the load. You need to make your program faster. This already gives away that I might have tuned Chrissy's, Chrissy's stuff a little bit, right? So, also, something that's completely uh, that you need when you're um, tuning a query. That the website looks horrible, but this has been around forever, and every DBA that I know uses this. Uh, if you're in SQL Server, you want to know what is going on inside my database. What is this thing doing? You have uh, a, a GUI thing in Management Studio, and there's SP who and SP who too. And these two always confuse me. They're, they give a lot of noise. There is a guy who wrote SP who is active. That thing just works. It's perfect. It gives you only the queries that are running. It gives you what they are doing. It gives you the query plan of what they are doing. It gives you if they are blocking somebody. And it gives you um, lots of other information. If they're writing to TempDB and whatnot. But only for the queries that are doing something. It's all free. Just go there and install it. Now. Chrissy's code. Let's see if I have Chrissy's code here, or that I opened up the other one. Let's remove that quickly. Is this Chris, Chrissy's code? <laughs> I, <laughs> Normally, the, the projector, um, the resolution is really good on this thing. Normally, the resolution is not that good, and I have to make my screen bigger. So I'm, uh, I get away with presenting without my reading glasses. But now, if you see me do this, <laughs> it's because I need to read what it says. This is Chrissy's code. So, what does she do? First of all, um, she's, and this is a really great job. I love the way that she's, she, she, she does this. The, the code is already old. I'm, I'm pretty sure if Chrissy looked at it now, she went, she will go, oh, I need to move this to a module and do some different coding standards and whatnot. We all have this with our code, right? If you look at it, yes. Yes, of course, zoom. I have something called zoom in on the thing, but I can also make this bigger. How about, some, how about this? Too big? <laughs> so, what she does, is this really Chrissy's code? Let me, yeah, let's make sure. Okay. I've, I've got a file, and she talks about inserting a million rows into a table. Uh, the file I have is about 12 million rows, but it's the same file. So I just, I did, I did, I did, I just did this. Just take the first million and be done with it. <laughs> um, what she does is she creates a stream reader, uh, a stream reader, and reads through the file. This is probably one of the fastest ways to go through a file with PowerShell, right? I think. Um, yeah, so a stream reader, I've been using that for every time the, and, you, and on, you, you have the thing where you read the whole file in memory, don't do that with big files, that just makes no sense. Um, so she opens a stream reader, but to insert it in SQL Server, what I see a lot of times is people will just get a line, split it up, and do an insert statement into SQL Server. But SQL Server has a bulk insert method. You can use a bit of code, where is it? Yeah, the SQL bulk copy in the SQL client over there. Uh, line 44, all the way here. Ah, yes, and here she uses the bulk copy. Uh, so she, she fills the data set and then bulk inserts it into SQL Server. Now, if your file is big, you might want to split that up. And that's why she has a little bit of code here that if the, num the line number is, is the batch size, then bulk copy that first, clear the thing out, and then continue. So batches of 50,000, which is a good choice. I've, I've seen that a lot. Uh, so batches of 50,000 50, to bulk copy something into SQL Server. Um, I've, tried the, I've tried to tweak this a bit from the SQL Server perspective first. 
um, I'm cheating a bit. What I did was, um, and I think this is fair, <laughs> but you decide. In ETL processes where you load something into SQL Server and then continue processing it in like data warehouses, it is totally cool to make something bulk insert it as fast as you can and then process it further into SQL Server. It's like a staging table. Where can the staging table live? Who cares, right? If um, my staging import breaks, this is not an OLTP system where I need to have the exact transaction. I just truncate the table, start again. So where do you put, if you want to be really quick in inserting uh, a table into SQL Server, what would be the fastest place to insert something? Well, yeah, memory, but you don't control that in SQL Server. Now, there's a database that is much faster than all the other databases where you can actually create normal tables in. Uh, TempDB. TempDB is uh, less aggressive in writing to disk. Uh, this is a dirty trick, I know. <laughs> but um, So Chrissy was at two minutes something? Okay, I need to clear the tables first, make sure they're empty. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, this. Don't peek at that. It gives away. A, uh, ooh, ooh, don't do that. This one. Um, oh, you can already see it. <laughs> I, I didn't. So this is not bad at all. So fifty thousand, hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, four hundred thousand rows. Um, Crazy was at two minutes. I, th I think we're going to be up there somewhere. Uh, the, uh, it's exactly one minute, so you're going to see about 30 seconds, I think. And here we go. 28 seconds. Would that be okay for Chrissy? Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, he says. <laughs> okay. I, I want to... Okay. So, challenge accepted. I'm going to see if I can speed this up. So 28 seconds. Um, a common mistake that I see in SQL Server a lot is where you go to uh, uh, the databases. I need a new database. You go right click, new database. OK, done. Uh, SQL Server 2016 is a little bit better, but all their databases all have the auto grow set to one megabyte every time. And the log is 10%, so it will keep growing in bigger chunks. And that's the most wrong you can get. Um, this thing no, right? How about now? Yeah. I had it on mute the whole time. This is a magical device. <laughs> that would be interesting for the recording. I, it was on mute, but it was working, so I forgot to switch it on. Anyway, um, if you do that, if you create a normal database, just go create database, it will be like 10 megabytes in size or one megabyte in size, and it will grow with one megabyte chunks. If you do that with this, so just do create database and then do this, insert, it'll be around 40, 50 seconds uh, because you're waiting for the auto grow to kick in all the time. Um, I've pre-sized TempDB to be the size that it can handle this, and I'm using TempDB, which is a lot less aggressive to writing to disk. Um, now, where are we on time? Got half an hour left. Good. Um, there is, there are multiple ways to uh, try and attack this. And I've had a uh, a chat with a guy in the bar here because this PowerShell conference scares me a bit. <laughs> there is, a, you have a chat in a bar, and some somebody, just somebody, goes, "So, what is your talk about?" And I enthusiastically to start talking about it and he just in in a matter of 30 seconds he mentions like 20 things that I could do have you considered this or that or that or maybe like this or maybe that and I'm thinking oh shit <laughs> so uh, bef without giving away what I did uh, he mentioned well I, I told him what I was gonna do and he said but you can also maybe do this what he suggested was reading part of the file and have another thread read another part of the file. So I'm reading, I take two threads, I'm reading the first half and I take another thread, I read the second half. And I tried that, but if you open a stream reader um, at a certain offset, there are, you have the, um, 
the base thing. You can, you can go there and go to, to a certain offset in a file and then do a read line and continue. Problem is, if you split that up, you do not know where the other one is going to be. Because if you do read line, underneath the covers, uh, it, it reads a buffer which is bigger than the read line and then takes that line. So your position in the file is already beyond that read line. You cannot know where you are. You need to use certain tricks. The trick you could use in SQL Server, if you have a unique number in the file, is split it up, just insert everything, and then remove the duplicates. There is something you can do, and I've tried to play with it a bit, but uh, I was in my laptop yesterday and some drinking suddenly happened, so that didn't work. Um, <laughs> can't help it. Um, but the thing I did is a bit different. I tried it a different way. There is a um, friend of mine. Let's see if I can pull up his blog. Um, you no, know, this is Chrissy's. This is Glenn. Can't, can't see it. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, here we are. Here we go. This is, um, and this is an important picture here. This is SSIS. This is called integration service, built into SQL Server. This is what data warehouse people use to, to pull data into SQL Server or move them across SQL Servers. And there's a trick that we use to um, insert a file faster, big files. This is about big files, not a lot of small ones. Big files faster into SQL Server. You read it twice, the whole file. If you have enough speed on your disk, if, you, if your disk can handle it, just read the file many times and then each process processes a part of the file. So you don't have to do an offset when you go to the right place. You just read it, and then you decide which row you're going to insert. Now, how do you do that? Well, let's see if I can find Hank explaining this in this thing. It will be... Yes. You use something really simple. The modulo algorithm. You use the modular algorithm. If you have um, 16 threads, you just read it 16 times. And you take the row number, if you have a row number, and you do a mod function on it that is uh, 16. And you get 16 uh, different buckets that you throw uh, your stuff in. So the first one, it's on CPU 1, reads the file and does uh, mod 1. The second one, et cetera, et cetera. I, I see you looking like, what? <laughs> it's, this is what I'll be bragging about at home. The, the PowerShell guy <laughs> looking at my code in a PowerShell conference and going, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I don't even care if this is a good thing or not. <laughs> um, so this, and this is not, not something new. This is an old trick. We've been using this for a while. So I've been looking for ways to do parallelism in PowerShell. And then there's some really good uh, code examples to do that. Um, but to save time, I thought, no, 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 oh, wait a minute, I'm a SQL guy. I should not try and do all the PowerShell in the world to make this problem go away because then it's expensive again, my time, right? So I found a library. Uh, uh, RS, RS Job, Bo Prox is the, uh, the guy who wrote it. And it's a parallelism library for uh, for PowerShell. So let's give this a try, right? Uh, with my coding skills here, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Is that this one? Yes. So what I'm doing here is basically starting all the way up the top. Oh, let's zoom in. Let's do that. All the way up the top. I'm just starting 16, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm creating 16 script blocks and I'm starting jobs, right? 16 of them, uh, from numbered from zero to 15. And the script block has Chrissy's code in it with a few exceptions, the most important one being what you process. And that would be here. So basically I've added a block here if it's your turn, right, uh, and I, I, I give it the, the number in that I 
from the thread, right? Um, if it's your turn, then import it. If not, add, continue. Only do every 16th line or every 15th line or every third line, whichever thread you are. Now, I've tried running this. It does work. Unfortunately, this is probably due to my not understanding the RS job uh, module. It is a lot slower. Why? Uh, I can show you this. I'll start it quickly. I uh, need to truncate something first. Okay, another trick that I'm using. I need to explain this before I continue. I'm cheating again using 16 tables. <laughs> Because I will get, uh, if you have only one table, the, um, the bulk insert will not be as fast. It, it will be the, the fastest if you insert it into separate tables. Is this still fair? I think so. If you have enterprise edition, you can insert it into 16 tables and then merge it into one with one line of code if you partition the table. If you have standard edition, you can do uh, some unioning on the, with a view on top of it and continue processing it. You're only going to need it as a staging table. You decide if this is fair or not. I think it is. <laughs> um, if you do a union, use union all. I've seen that mistake a lot of times. Union does a distinct operation on all your data. Union all just sticks everything together and moves it through it's, uh, faster in cases like this. So using 16 tables, let's use both code. Is it this one? Oh, yeah. Need to run the sure if I did that, so let's do that now. I get no feedback. Uh, I'm sure there's ways to, to put, the, I think he has some, some stuff in there to get feedback while it's running, and I'll figure all of that out. I've not given up on this thing yet. I want to use a library uh, uh, because of the time thing, right? Uh, and not write all that code myself. There are some really clever people in the PowerShell community. Uh, this is how you can see that a community grows up. Uh, SQL Server community had the same. All DBAs used to write their own backup scripts because we wouldn't trust anything that came off that funny internet. Um, for years, I've backed up hundreds of databases at a big bank in the Netherlands. And then we found out that some backups of some servers never worked because, of course, we didn't test them. These days, we all do that automatically, right, with Chrissy's code. Right? You set up a test restore server, really easy. She has a blog post, how you can do that. But um, we looked at the code, why did the backup not work? And underneath the code, it just said, print, backup successful. <laughs> <laughs> so look at the code, <laughs> understand what it does, make sure it works. Th these days we have unit testing, app fair stuff. Um, these days, a DBA wouldn't write their own backup uh, scripts. If, if you have SQL servers and you're still using maintenance plans and something, uh, Google Ola Hallengren. There's a guy in Sweden who, who wrote the best backup script on the planet. It beats all the third-party tools. It just works. You, you grab the one file, you stick it into SQL Server, press F5, a bunch of jobs appear without a schedule, nothing will start running automatically, and you switch on the jobs that you want. And it's all smart defaults, it just works. It's brilliant. Nobody has to, has to write their own backup and maintenance scripts anymore. Um, I, are you guys convinced that this is longer than 20, 28 seconds or something? Right. Let me show you why. I, I think I'm doing it wrong. Or maybe I need to talk to Bo about how to use his library better. But, um, I have a count here somewhere. Ah, that could be it. Yeah? So that could be a, de a, a demo fail then. Basically, <laughs> thank you for pointing this out. No, um, yeah, th th that could be it. What I noticed was, and maybe you can see it here if I blow this up a bit. Um, it's skewed. You can see here's a lot more rows than this one. Uh, the first one doesn't have any rows at all. Uh, 
This is the count from all the tables. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a select count from all the 16 tables. And the number of rows should go up somewhat equal. Not completely equal, but somewhat equal. And it doesn't. So I'm doing something wrong, or maybe I need to use that, uh, that, that, that um, parallelism module a bit different. Um, in any way, it doesn't seem to do it at the same time. So maybe I'm, I'm not scheduling it on every CPU. Maybe it's still stuck on a few CPUs and it's not doing it. I need to investigate some more. Maybe contact, and this is a cool part of community, contact the guy who made this thing and show him what I did and ask him the question. And he'll be, yeah, just move that line down there. Duh. And uh, <laughs> could be, we'll see. Um, I think that um, uh, I certainly for me, and I'm, I'm sure most of you have this, uh, this where community members write stuff that everybody can use, you, the, I wouldn't be able to live without that. Uh, imagine writing your own restore queries for your databases. I just do uh, uh, the, the DBA tools thing, restore database, and it just finds all my backups and looks which script is the correct one and restores them all. And I wouldn't even know how to write a restore command. I need Google for that. Uh, don't tell people that hire me that I just said that. <laughs> um, so, sort of, kind of, the I, I think the idea is right, but um, still running. I'm going to cancel this. Uh, I should have a bunch of jobs now. Uh, get PS job. Uh, one command. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not a normal job. RS job. RS job. I'm so used to typing PS in front of anything. Uh, get RS job. See, there's a bunch of jobs. So I'm just going to get job. Remove job? RS. Oh. Get RS job. Remove RS job. There we go. Um, this is something I've learned from uh, many people. They always say, don't type in a demo. <laughs> I just typed in a demo. There you go. I'm just going to leave them there. Who cares? What I'm going to do is, and I've got some time, right? And this thing is done. So this is officially time for your questions, but I'm not done yet talking. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the um, trick I did, all trick, uh, to get this to parallel, uh, to get this to, to be uh, parallel. So what I'm doing, open up that on the other window. Uh, it's in original. No, I need this one. Yes. So still, oh, let's do that before I trip on it and make it into a real show of song and dance. <laughs> That'll be not cool. So I'm going to do somewhat similar, but I'm not going to use the module anymore. I'm just going to use a really old trick in the book to parallelize this. Parallelize. Parallelize? Parallelize is the wrong thing, right? Parallelize. <laughs> I, I would not, <laughs> not parallelize. Parallelize the thing. So what I'm doing, I'm giving it a parameter, just one parameter where, it, where, I, where I used the module before and the, the, um, the iteration was the parameter on, on which thread I, I need. I'm just going to start it in 16 times with a different method and give it that as a parameter. So I'm still going to start the one script and it's still going to get its own piece and I'm going to read the file 16 times. Same thing, but now I'll, I'm using something really old school. Do you ha guys have something to throw at me? Please don't. Um, because I'm using a batch file. Ooh. Print? No, not print. No, yeah, no print. There's no printer. No, stop. See? It's just, it just doesn't like it. Edit. Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> Does this mean I'm never allowed to speak here again? <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, I'm sure this is me. I'll get that RS stuff to work nicely where it evens out, but that was the problem. This thing just starts 16. Well, do I need to explain how a batch file works? Uh, uh, show the code. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, where were we? 28 seconds, right? Okay. Any guesses? 
Oh, it's quiet all of a sudden. Cow and truncate. We move this. No, not F4. F5. F5 again. Go here. Go here. Now, uh, when I double click this, you're going to see 16 windows. And you're going to see some time, and then they're all going to disappear. And by the time they're all, they've all disappeared, we're done, right? That's the idea, unless you see a bunch of errors. Then I'm cheating. So, any guesses? 28 seconds was the original. Three. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> Here we go. I'll just start it. There we go. All it has to do a little bit. One, two, nine hundred thousand, one million, six, seven seconds. Done. Would Chrissy be happy with that? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so basically this concludes what I wanted to show you. Um, a f a <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Count. F5. Ooh, there's one. Let me see. see. Ooh. Yep. Oh, that's the original. Yeah. Thank you, William. Yeah, that's this one. Don't have to count that one. That's the, the one that... Oh, remove that. See? <laughs> Blow that up a bit. All filled. They all have a part of... They all did a part of the job. This is nicely spaced out. This is not always the case. If you don't have a... A uh, line number in your code, it, it any number that's unique will work on this. Uh, there are tricks to get this done. There's many blog posts on how to do this mod function. As long as you have the speed on the SSDs or whatever disk you're using, if you can, if you have the power to read it multiple times, and Windows will probably help you with some caching going on there because you're reading the same thing. Um, this will clearly uh, make some things faster. Um, would I still be interested in, in other tools that would make this faster, but I'd have to uh, learn how that language would work? Not at all. I would have been happy with the 28 seconds, but I just knew I could get it, this a little bit faster. He says, full of confidence now. <laughs> uh, um, so we have a, a few minutes left, like 10, 32 minutes, something like 10 minutes, 12 minutes left. Um, I'll be here today and tomorrow if you want to steal my code or whatever or uh, really check if it works by running it yourself or uh, if you've seen what I've done wrong in the uh, RS job and want to uh, play with this thing a bit, totally come find me and we'll do that. We'll geek out a bit. Um, and with that, if you guys have any questions, I have some slides. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Log parser. Couldn't even get it to work on this file. <laughs> uh, on another file, it, it's okay. Log parser works. In log parser, you have to set, if you do not set anything, it will just do one row at a time, which is really slow. But you can set the transaction size, and that's the trick to get log parser to work a bit faster. But I found it to be cumbersome. Oh, shift F5, Andre. Um, cumbersome to find out the code that you need. Uh, this, for a SQL guy, we've had R appear in SQL Server, a statistical language. Now, a week ago, they threw Python inside the SQL engine. How many languages do you need to learn? <laughs> Come on. Um, so this was the suggestion from the guy from the bar. Do it this way. I explained that one. Uh, this was the trick that I used. Clearly seems to work for this one. Um, there's the demo slide. I think you have a 15 minute break now, so grab some coffee. I will do the same thing. And then you ask the question saying, this is me. If you want to contact me, you need anything from me, uh, tweet me on Andre Kaman or Andre Kaman at gmail.com or Andre Kaman at cloudDBA.io, which is the company I own together with William over there. And enough marketing. Uh, and shameless plug, uh, I organize a SQL Saturday in the Netherlands 
Last year we had 420 people in the door. We're expecting a huge turnout again this year. And it's all SQL Server the whole day, many parts of SQL Server. There will be lots of PowerShell as well. And uh, it is sort of kind of free. We charge a 15 euro lunch fee. And it is in English, everything. So if you're looking for, for the rest, if you have any questions about the Netherlands, um, I have never been inside a coffee shop. I have no idea how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't help you. Um, I don't smoke. Um, so th uh, w the only thing I do know is that we have a smoking ban in public places. Most of you will have that as well, unless you're from Austria, I'm guessing. Um, so this is a bit awkward if you have a coffee shop to run, right? Uh, so we uh, uh, have an amendment to our law that says you are allowed to smoke cannabis in a coffee shop, not normal cigarettes. <laughs> Seriously, that would be illegal. <laughs> Anyhow, SQL Saturday, uh, September 30 uh, this year. Um, come check it out if you like, if you're in the neighborhood. That's it. That's it for me. I hope you have a great day uh, and another one tomorrow as well. And thank you.